Hi guys, welcome to SMI Up. My name is Julie and today we'll be talking about common reasons for denial of study permit visa application. So let's dive right into it. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the most common reason and that's insufficient funds. And if you've watched my study permit overview video, I talked about um, insufficient funds. I talked about, in fact, I have a separate video on proof of funds. This just shows how important funding is to, you know, your application, your whole study permit application. You cannot overemphasize it. So if you're going to have a sponsorship, then you have to be clear about who is sponsoring you. And if you are, have a full, like, if you have full funding from your school, you want to make sure you show it clearly and mention it in your statement of purpose. So make sure you have a separate section in your statement of purpose dedicated to funding where you talk about everything, um, how much your living expenses, I mean, how much of your funding is covering your living expenses. Remember, you have to show at least $10,000 for your living expenses and then the money to cover your tuition. For the first year so now ideally you should show money to cover for first year for the first year but some people go as far as showing money to cover for the two years if it's a two-year program you know so just just make sure you um you show it clearly and this is just a word to those that uh they want that want to, uh, that want to go for a phd without funding um my advice is don't ever go for a phd without funding as a matter of fact don't go for PhD with that, with partial funding because the PhD is a long adult process. I am currently a PhD student and I'm, I'm saying this um, for a fact because I'm in a PhD program and I know how it is. So it's a long drawn out process. It's not two years, it's not three years. At the minimum, it's four years at the minimum in Canada. So you want to show that you have, you have money to cover the tuition, and you have money for your living expenses it's a no-brainer you don't want to go for that kind of stress without money it's very stressful as it is to do a phd program how much more you worrying about money so now let me tell you most of the time the funding package that they give here in canada barely covers your living expense so it covers your tuition yes but there's so much expense that comes up as an international student. I think I need to do a video on this so that people are aware. Like you have to pay for insurance. If you come with family, oh God help you. You have to pay for health insurance for everyone in the family. And that's why I advise if you are married or you, you have a spouse, it's, it's better if you know that both of you are planning to eventually relocate to Canada. It's just better to come with your spouse so that the other person is working and then you are there. But if you cannot, if your spouse is not yet decided, that's fine. You can take your time, but just be aware of the cost that comes along with it. Especially if you are here with the children and your spouse is at the other side, you need to be advised of how much you will be incurring. And with the exchange rate, them spend, sending money here, it can really, really accumulate and become a lot. So for anyone considering, maybe this is the um, push you need, to think very well for anyone considering a phd without funding please don't do it you know the job prospect after a phd you have to be very strategic about it i believe there are opportunities for a phd but a phd is usually for a person that wants to stay in research either in industry or in as a you know in as a professor or something so it does not like the end does not justify you going into debt for it it just does not it just does not it's not a medical degree where you're guaranteed of being able to pay back the loan immediately after after the degree so let me leave it at that okay so um one of the common reasons as i was saying is insufficient funds insufficient funds and if you watch that my video You'll be clued in on, in on all you need to know about this. And then another reason is, um, and then another reason is home tie, the home tie issue. And it's just, it just means inadequate ties to your home country. And there are many ways you can show this. As I explained as well in this overview of study permit, you can show this by showing your properties, um, C of O, your uh, document for your land or whatever you have back home 
um, if you have parents back home, you can talk about the fact that you have parents back home and that you're definitely going to come back home. If you have your children, and just make sure you mention um, things that tie you back home to avoid being refused for this reason. So, And then the next one is um, a convincing study plan. So the question is, is this person a bona fide student? And this specifically comes in when you're unable to establish a strong purpose of visits. For instance, if you are um, changing career, so you are in the business line and then you want to move to health science or you're in health science and then you want to study a program in business or something, make sure that you convince the visa officer. So you, you make sure this does not happen by convincing them through your statement of purpose. This is when you really need to use your statement of purpose to your advantage. Talk about your passion, link it to maybe a job that you were doing that you fell in love with and then you've decided to change careers. If you are a mature applicant and you are applying for, you know, something like maybe a very mature applicant, maybe in his, in his or her 40s and is applying for a bachelor degree, um, there might be questions coming up in the visa officer's mind if this person is actually just um, wanting to live for economic purpose and not really to study. So you want to show that you are passionate about what you want to do. As I said, anyone, anyone has, I mean, has a right to start again. Anyone has a right to chase their dreams or to look, get a better life for themselves. It's just how you put yourself out there. So make sure you um, present it clearly that you are passionate about this program, you want to do this program, and that you are coming back home. So these are the things that the visa officer is looking for. And don't present it like you just want to use it to escape, really. And that's the question to ask yourself. It's a study permit. Are you really coming to study? You know, And this translates into when you get there, put your heart into where you want to study. If it's a one-year program, put your heart into it. I know you might be trying to you know, make some money to make hands meet, but also remember that primarily you're here to study. So just put your mind in and make the best of that opportunity. That can be the difference um, in your employability after school. And um, there is another reason why a person can be denied and that's travel history. But now I want to say, and this is purely my opinion, but my opinion is gotten from, you know, so many things I've seen and so many people that we've applied for this together, myself included. So when I applied for my study permit, I'd only been to one country and that's Spain in Europe. And I went there for research purpose. And I know so many people, I mean so many, I can like, I can really count them like this, that have never stepped their foot out of Nigeria, out of the shores of Nigeria or their home country, not only Nigeria now. And they were given this visa. So travel history is not um, the only reason of itself. It's, it, it's not the only reason why a visa officer denies. Usually when a visa officer denies, it's, uh, it's an additional reason. You know, it's not a sole reason for de denial. So I really don't think it's necessary to like start traveling to countries nearby in the hope that you will build some travel history and then you will come and apply. I think you should really focus on your strength, focus on your study plan, focus on your proof of fund, focus on putting your application together in an excellent way. Even if you've not, you are not well traveled, I mean, everyone starts from somewhere, right? So even if you are not well traveled, this should not affect and it, it shouldn't affect your um, the, the outcome of your visa application. And this is, I'm talking from the experience of people around me that I know that I've done this, it didn't affect them. Okay, so that's, that's let me just leave that at that as well. Okay, so um, I want to also say that there is a reason that is not so common and that's inadmissibility to Canada. This is not a common reason, but it, it, it can happen and it, you know happens actually you see where people have been previously banned for instance and they are not aware you know some people have applied prior and previously and they committed a kind of maybe misrepresentation or something and they've been banned but they were not told in the um you know the refusal letter it wasn't shown there it wasn't stated there that they've now been banned and then they keep applying some have applied twice, thrice, four times after that, and they have always been refused. 
Meanwhile, they've been banned for five years. Some will be told, while some will not be told, right? So um, just make sure you, you, you will know if you've committed misrepresentation before. You will know. And, you know, just make sure you put everything into context and be sure that that's not the issue in your case. And also, having previous overstay, so, so previous overstay can happen. So if you've ha previously overstayed and you've been refused, it could be as a result of that. It could be as a result of that. Also, having an inadmissible family member. For instance, if you are a dad and you want to sponsor your child and you're currently on a ban and the child is a minor, he, has to, he or she has to travel with you. The child can be refused because the accompanying family member is inadmissible. That can happen, that can happen. So as I said, make sure you consider everything and just put everything into perspective. And there's also the issue of criminal conviction. If you've been previously convicted of a crime, this can affect, this can affect the outcome of your study permit application or your visa application in general, not just a study permit. But remember that the visa officer does this on case-by-case -case basis. So it might be different in your case. I don't know. Okay, so um, we move to medical grounds. People can be denied for medical grounds. And according to like what's in the rule, like you can be denied based on danger to public health, based on danger to public safety, or based on excessive demand on health or social services. So this is also determined on a case by case basis. I cannot say, you know, that this is the reason. So people say HIV, I cannot say it. It might not be, you know, you, it's not written anywhere on the CIC website that um, HIV will lead to a refusal. Mm -hmm. And some people say hepatitis, I cannot say as well. I don't know, I don't know if that is true, but this is just, what I know that a medical grant can be a basis for refusal. And then, um, yeah, those are, those are just the reasons why a person can be, can be denied the study permit application. Once again, I'll refer you to my video. I did a thorough job on that video on the overview of study permit application listen to it and I, I believe it will really guide you in putting your applications together if you have any comment or you have any advice for people out there that are listening to this video please drop it in the comment section below and if you have any question or anything you think you need me to talk about do let me know in the comment section as well uh, if you've been on this channel you've been enjoying this content remember to subscribe i tell you i always i will make you worth worth your while so remember to subscribe and also like my video and share it and just basically have fun thank you so much for joining on this episode um i look forward to seeing you the next time bye bye